excelling. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Therefore, see, we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, uh, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But, I want you to get this bit, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that is the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and you ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. The God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We need to understand that we have a spirit and soul inside of our body that is eternal. These things go out into eternity, but where will you be five seconds after you die? That's the question. It all depends what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you believe on Christ, if you receive Him as your Saviour, your soul will be saved. You'll be in eternity 
or throughout all eternity, you'll be in heaven. And that's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us, that we would be in heaven and not in the lake of fire and brimstone, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now repentance is a change of mind. Simply come to God and agree with Him. Yes, I realize that I'm a sinner, but my Son has died for me upon the cross. Then all you simply need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, or this tabernacle, that is our body, this is speaking to Christians, we dissolve, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, in other words in this body, do groan being burdened. Not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that immortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self-same thing as God, who also hath given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing this, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, that is, while our spirit and soul is at home in our body, this is the Christians now, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that is, the believers, the Christians, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance, and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, or in other words, whether we're mad, it is of God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth forth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So we need to understand that we are dead in our trespasses and in our sins, going down to hell because of our sins. Our sins are damning us to that terrible place called hell. We're sending ourselves there by the sins that we commit. And especially the one of rejecting Christ as our Saviour. I'm here to tell you this afternoon, there's no other way to be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In other words, if someone saved, they're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, or instead of Christ, be you reconciled to God. In other words, be made friends to God. You see, the reality of it is this. You and I, when we're born into this world, we are the enemies of God. That's not a nice thing to hear, but it's the absolute truth that we are the enemies of God by our wicked works, in our minds and in our sinful behaviour. We've got to be made the friends of God. You see, you and I have caused the problem. You and I have sinned against the Lord, and because of those sins, we are heading down to hell. And God does not want you to go to hell, my friend. He wants you to be in heaven with himself for all eternity. But we cannot be there apart from Jesus Christ. You must realize that there is life alone found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God that is and shake your mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be saved. And this chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. This chapter finishes with this verse. For he hath made him to be sin for us, that is the Father in heaven, made the Son upon earth, upon the cross, to be sin for us, who do no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. There's only one way to receive the righteousness of God, and that is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. When have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 We then are, uh, as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. That means, help thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You see, we need to understand that this business of salvation is urgent. We need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now while there's time and opportunity. We don't know when we're going to leave planet Earth. None of us know that. Only the Lord knows that. We need to understand we're in great danger. If we die without Christ, we'll be in hell. And God does not want you to be in hell, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfaded, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, 
as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own mouths. Now, for recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This is speaking unto the Christians, to the believers. But are you a believer? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a child of God? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You might say, what are you talking about? We're all the children of God. Wrong. We are not the children of God until we be brought again into God's family through the new birth, being born from above, born into God's family, through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, again as written Christians, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, we have robbed no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding uh, joyful in all our tribulation. For uh, when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side, without the fightings, within the fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us uh, your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I did not repent, though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were uh, made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. The godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sorrow, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, Yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did, did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we uh, for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was 
refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything of him of you, to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found the truth. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all. How in fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Again, this is written to Christians. Moreover, brethren, we do, do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affl affliction, an abundance of their joy, and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty, that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others. The forwardness of others. And to provoke the sincerity, the sincerity, sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. See, he left heaven's glory and came down to this sick cursed earth to die upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that he served it believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. Our life is just like a vapour. It appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. I wonder where you heard it for all eternity. Are you in the kingdom of God? Are you, are you saved this afternoon? Do you have forgiveness for your sins? Are you a child of God? Are you on the way to heaven? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? And herein I give my advice for this is expedient for you. Who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to rule, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he, hath, he that uh, had gathered much had nothing over it. And he that gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who, 
was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with his with this grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same lord a declaration of your ready mind avoiding this that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us uh, providing for honest things not only in the sight of the world but also in the sight of men and we have sent with them our brother whom we have often times uh, proved diligent in many things but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you whether any do inquire of Titus he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ wherefore show ye to them and be and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf well I'll leave it there but we need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross not for his own sins he has no sin he knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. And he was made, the, made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, as we read earlier. We need to understand the righteousness of God will be given unto us if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we become a child of God through faith alone in him, what we need to do is come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. Do you have you received forgiveness for your sins? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? There's no need for that. You need to get on the narrow road that leads under heaven. You need to have forgiveness for your sins. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on Him for your eternal salvation? If you're interested in this, look me up youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.